All right, so good afternoon, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank Dr. Reema for making me a part of this very interesting instruction course, and also to the AIUS Scientific Committee for giving us a chance to speak upon this. So I will be talking about neoplastic masquerades of uveitis. A lot of times when we see in our clinics these patients, sometimes we may be probably oscillating between whether it's an infectious or a non-infectious etiology, but a lot of times we also need to keep in mind neoplastic causes of these diseases and these presentations. So what do we mean by a masquerade? So uveitic masquerade syndromes usually are a group of disorders that present as an intraocular inflammatory process, but are in fact non-inflammatory diseases. So the intraocular inflammation here is secondary to another initial disorder or an intraocular cells and opacities are basically non-inflammatory in origin, which may be either because of pigments, blood or malignant cells. And we need to keep this in mind in atypical presentations, in cases which are recalcitrant or not responding to what we initially thought of them to be. So this is a slight courtesy one of my colleagues, Dr. Anamika. So if you see these cases with a pigmented hypopion, again, your window of suspicion should go to something else apart from probably a uveitis. So if you see a brown color or pigmented hypopion, usually that can be because of necrotic iris and dispersed melanin granules. And sometimes that can be a clue to an underlying uveal melanoma. Similarly, in kids with a sterile hypopion, again, one of the differentials which must be kept in mind is probably a retinoblastoma. So let me show you some more cases. So this was one patient who came to a clinic, known case of diabetes, with a sudden decrease of vision in the right eye for last one week. Now you see the left eye, left eye has got a hypopion, but the right eye suddenly comes with this intense blood stain hypopion. And when we did a tap of this patient and a bone marrow analysis along with a peripheral smear, what we found were myeloblasts, bland cells and metamyelocytes. So a recalcitrant or a blood stain hypopion should alert us to the presence of a masquerade or an underlying blood dyscrasia. And in these cases, a very simple test like a complete blood picture and a peripheral smear can help in detection of these cases. Another important point why these become very important for us and why ophthalmologists can play a very important role in these cases is the fact that presence of a hypopion in cases of leukemia should alert a clinician to the possibility of either a relapse or the fact that probably your patient is going into a blast crisis. So an impending blast crisis can present as a hypopion Similarly, cases of relapse and also a CNS spread and a leptomeningeal involvement can possibly be heralded by a hypopion because what happens is that from the pile arteries to the enterythmoid and then these malignant cells enter the AC. So presence of a hypopion in a case of leukemia should also alert us to the possibility of a probable CNS spread. So CNS spread, blast crisis, all of these can be assessed and probably evaluated by ophthalmologists in these cases. So this is the third case. This was a 52-year-old lady who came to us with a progress, gradual diminution of vision in the left eye for the last one and a half years. Had been investigated earlier for all causes of ocular inflammation, including TB, sarcoidosis. Actually had received six monthly courses of ATT twice along with steroids and had also received anti-VEGF injections because of the fact that there was a suspicion of underlying CNVM. But if you look over here clearly, you can see this lesion over here, this well-demarcated lesion in the eye and now because of the fact that this patient is not responding to treatments a recalcitrant lesion when we saw this patient when we did an autofluorescence you can see the central hyperfluor autofluorescence with the surrounding hyper autofluorescent small areas over here an ultrasound showed a well defined lesion with a central lucency and an OCT shows this area of coronal elevation but apart from the coronal elevation what you see is also SRF and these shaggy photoreceptors and this disruption of photoreceptors. So this possibly was a clue to the fact that we are dealing not with a uveitis but with an underlying tumour. And an ICG showed hypo hyperfluorescence earlier which stayed hyperfluorescent throughout all stages. So a biopsy was done and this biopsy revealed the presence of an amelanotic coronal melanoma. So you can see HMB45 cells and positivity for melanoma cells. So this was a patient which was not responding to treatment earlier. Biopsy revealed the presence of a melanoma. A plaque brachytherapy was done and subsequently after just three months you can see the entire lesion regressing. The marge is becoming more well defined and the size of the lesion also started regressing. So whenever you are faced with a case which is not responding to what you initially thought it to be, it makes sense to go back, revise your diagnosis and reassess these cases. So this was an atypical variant or a melanotic coral melanoma, which can sometimes mimic coral granulomas. 
So another case, this was a 57-year-old lady with a six-month history of decrease of vision and floaters in one of her eyes. Was seen by a local ophthalmologist earlier, diagnosed with uveitis, and was started on topical steroids. Visual acuity was 20 by 400 in the right eye. She also had signs of inflammation. But when you look over here, you see this extensive subretinal infiltrate, subretinal RP lesions, vitritis, and also an optic nerve infiltration. And you can see this well-defined creamy yellowish lesions over here, which are subretinal and leopard spots over here. The other eye now, when you look at it, you see these multiple sub-RP lesions. The right eye ultrasound showed this subretinal heterogeneous mass over here with the localized RD and the left eye showed these sub-RP infiltrates. So you see sub-RP infiltrates in a patient who has also got subretinal infiltrates, optic nerve infiltration and probably you are dealing not with uveitis but with a lymphoma. So this was a case where initially these diagnoses were suspected to be, these were the differentials but this was a case of a bilateral primary vitreoretinal lymphoma. Biopsy revealed the presence of these cells over here and the immunohistochemistry showed CD20 antibody positivity. This was a diffuse large B cell lymphoma. Was started on intravital methotrexate with an induction of two injections per week for four weeks. A consolidation phase of one injection per week for the next eight weeks and a maintenance subsequently. And post the injection only the lesion started regressing in the left eye as well as in the right eye and post six injections. Subsequently, you can see most of the lesions have regressed. Post two injections also, some of the lesions have started regressing and the margins have started becoming more well-defined. And this is how the patient was post 12 injections. So again, when you see these patients with extensive sub-RP deposits, optic nerve infiltration, think probably of a lymphoma. So this was how the patient was initially. And post treatment, most of these sub-RP deposits have also started regressing. Unfortunately, the patient developed neurological symptoms later on and developed a primary CNS lymphoma also and is now under systemic treatment. The patient, however, does not have any ocular relapse at this point of time. So this is another case. Now, this was a lady who presented to us with this lesion over here along the arcades with the subretinal choroidal lesion. And an FFA shows these multiple pinpoint lesions also subsequently and this patient was initially thought of as having a posterior scleritis. However, this is where a good meticulous history taking comes into picture. Something which should be the backbone of all our ocular examinations. A good complete history taking. So this was the OCT of this patient where you can see this elevation, subretinal fluid, choroidal and retinal undulations. Again, a B scan was done but that did not show any characteristic subtenous fluid. So you see a choroidal lesion with pinpoint leakages thought of as a posterior scleritis. But when we went and took a history of this patient, this patient gave a history of an axillary mass. An FNAC was done of that axillary mass which revealed the presence of a carcinoma breast. This was a lady with CA breast along with brain metastasis is now under systemic chemotherapy. So again, this is how a good history taking comes into picture because you see a lesion which probably looked like a scleritis but just on the basis of a history when you could examine you found out that this patient had an axillary lesion and FNAC was done which revealed the fact that this was not a scleritis but was rather the secondaries which were seen in this case. So I would like to now conclude my talk by just giving these points. It's important to suspect masquerades in cases of atypical presentations, in cases which are not responding to your treatment and a good history taking and a systemic evaluation are the basis of a good UVI take evaluation. Thank you so much.